which was established by the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife and Kenya Wildlife Service and the local communities to create an enabling policy environment so that um, uh, conservation in, in Kenya can, can thrive and so that the tourism income uh, that the country gets and the jobs that are secured through tourism but also the, most importantly that the natural resources in our country um, is, 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 uh, is protected. Uh, over the years uh, we are today facing a big a, a crisis. We have the crisis of climate change, we have the crisis of youth unemployment, we have, uh, 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 and, and also we have a crisis of biodiversity loss where we have seen a lot of wildlife in the country um, uh, being lost. And so we began asking ourselves, how can you address all these three crises using one, uh, one, one method? And we realized that unless we do things at the community level, sustainability will always be an issue because we need to get the community buy-in, we need to get the community in the leadership uh, position, and we also need to get the communities to benefit. And so we believe that the future of conservation is not just community-based, where uh, other external actors are coming in to do work for a period of time, for one year, two years, and then they go. And then many of we've seen a lot of cases where th these experiments um, come to collapse. But if we do conservation at the community level, and if we put the communities themselves in the leadership so that the decisions that are being made by them benefits them, and if we empower them so that they can take action, then we have a sustainable uh, conservation model in Kenya. And this is so important for Kenya because only 8% of our country is protected under national parks and, re and reserves. So the country relies for over 65% of its wildlife on land in private and in community lands. And, and so in order to sustain this area, uh, these areas and open spaces to allow wildlife to move over large areas to reduce the cost to government through uh, compensation programs uh, to minimize human wildlife conflict, we do need to shift from community-based conservation to community-led conservation. Big crisis looming. One of them is youth unemployment. All these youth that can find job, it's a looming crisis. We have to get job opportunity for the youth. That means you need to move beyond primary, secondary, basic education. You need to move into um, training that makes you relevant for a job. And, and the interesting thing in the Mara is we actually lacking a lot of types of jobs. So there is a mismatch between the education and, and the jobs. And the other looming crisis is climate change. I think we are already way beyond looking at mitigations. We need to get into adaption. For example, secure the water resources. Neither livestock, people or wildlife can live without water. We all know that. And we don't take care of our water resources. That's only one example. Huh? Rain becomes erratic. It, it, it will probably be reduced. Look at northern Kenya today. And in developing countries, there is no funding to match this. I think it's a huge crisis. It will propel the poverty and insecurity. So we need to think much more long term, much more scale, much more funding to try to get ahead of the ball. I think we're way behind. From the, group, the former group ranches have been subdivided and each member of the community has been given his land. We require that partnership to bring back the land so that we can manage it collectively. We need that space. We don't want to lose the space that was available for wildlife. But at the same time, we have to appreciate that we cannot do wildlife conservation in the absence of livelihoods, in the absence of communities, uh, <coughs> and the environmental community livelihoods, and of course, livestock, because that is our mainstay. That is the first partnership we are talking about. The second partnership is between uh, tour operators, tourism partners who are here, both among themselves and also with the community, so that that is strengthened and we create uh, harmony and we create uh, value for both the business person who is doing in tourism and communities through the payments of certain uh, funds in the communities for use of the land. The third partnership we are talking about is a partnership between the community, the TPs, and other development partners, other donors, and also the government, both the, level, both the two levels of government. The county government, in this case Naro, which we have, we are happy that we have been having a very good work relationship. We have signed our MOEs with them to make sure that we collaborate and work together. And also the national government, through the 
through the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, which has been greatly uh, very supportive of us, both in terms of the policy uh, framework, which has now recognized uh, uh, conservancies as a, a land use option, which is critical to safeguarding the space for wildlife. These three partnerships I see and we believe will go a long way in making sure that the future looks great for both wildlife and also the environment plus the livelihood of our people who live in this uh, ecosystem, world-class services. One of the key entrants is getting locally, local, uh, lo getting well-trained skills uh, for the local people. And one of the entrants is for them to support, to sponsor one, two, or even five students uh, through a full package and to be trained in this college to fully qualify. And thereafter, absorb the trainees who are the graduates of this college into their, uh, into their work. I'm the principal wildlife tourism college of Masai Mara. Uh, this college has uh, three components. Um, we have the college path that, that will be taking in local students for training in the six, six key areas that are relevant for the uh, ecosystem. Uh, we also have uh, another section that we actually called Natumoi Campus, and that will be an educational tourism camp uh, that will take, actually be taking in clients. Uh, so basically that will be an arm that is uh, commercial uh, and, and that will generate in the, uh, revenue for uh, running the budget of, of the college. And then the, the last arm is the research hub. Uh, this, this section aims to be a, a, a center where research that is relevant for the for the Mara uh, landscape will be undertaken. So this 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 facility will be facilitating uh, researchers to uh, uh, board uh, and also the logistics uh, and, and and also uh, be a venue where meetings can take place uh, regarding research activities that are going on in the landscape, so that the findings or even uh, with the researchers can be disseminated to the to the community. Uh, but not only that, the college will also serve as a, 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 a venue for community meetings, uh, workshops, conferences, seminars. So this will really lead to uh, capacity building and empowerment for the uh, needs that are, arise uh, within the uh, within the Mara landscape. Now the entire college will take about um, uh, uh, about a hundred, about a hundred uh, students and uh, the researchers and also the education and tourism, uh, the college will offer. So the college is a TVET institution uh, that is community owned and the six courses will be in the areas of uh, wildlife management and environmental management at diploma level and also we'll also have the hospitality arm that has the guiding course, uh, we will also have the housekeeping, uh, food, uh, beverage sales and service, as well as also the front office operations. So all these are, are courses that uh, relate to what goes on in the ecosystem and that will just aim to give the locals training and skills so that they can actually get jobs within the industry and, and be able to earn a, a, a livelihood uh, for, for, for their families and also for the, um, for the community. But at the, the college does not only aim to get students from the local area, but other areas of Kenya that have got concurrent landscapes. Uh, and, and so this, this college is, is a college for Kenya. It's unique in its own, in its own setup. It's one of the colleges that you'll find in a, in a, in a wild uh, environment. And so it will be easy for them because they have the field at their, uh, their doorstep. It's also uh, one of the colleges that are actually owned by communities. Most by the community. Most colleges are either owned privately or owned by government. This is one of the colleges that is actually owned by the and run by the local community themselves for their own and for the benefit of of uh, of, 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 of their members. Olakira TV, Ewangan Olusholema.